Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Tony Khan is going to be joining us in the next segment. So we got to get anything that we don't want to talk about before Tony Khan comes on. Over with quick. And unfortunately, that means a little bit of talk about Raw because that's our job. So as noted in the opening segment, The Miz is still the champion. And every time... I make the same mistake every time. I I think like like a normal a normal person. It's always a mistake. When Miz won that briefcase, you know what I thought? I thought, well, this dummy booked himself into a corner and he had to put the belt on the Miz. So they're just gonna get it on and get it off and we're gonna get on with our lives. What a fool I was. What a fool I was. The reality is if, if I mean, he, he lost the briefcase. Like, that could have been the end of it. But they put the briefcase back on it. I should have known that they wanted to do something with The Miz. And I have a theory about why The Miz is the champion. And it's not some theory about, well, Peacock wanted this guy to be the champion. Or he can, he can talk on these shows. Who better than The Miz? Uh, no one loves wrestling more than... That's my favorite I heard over the last couple of days. No one loves this business more than The Miz. I can't even say it with straight face. So anyway, this is my theory, okay? And I'm right about this. So it's not even a theory, it's just a fact, all right? Let's say, Mike, that I was doing Wrestling Observer Live, and I'm looking at the secret viewership numbers that I have and the listener numbers, and I, I see, man, like, we've fallen off a cliff in the last year. We're down 25% year over year here on Observer Live. So what would what would a normal person do if they if they saw these statistics? Well, I'll tell you what they do. They'd say, "What could I do to make this show better?" Okay? So I think, well, maybe I'll uh, you know, I'll talk about what we're going to talk about the other day. Remember we were going to talk about something that would bring in ratings? Do you remember what that was? I forgot. The Twitch homies went crazy every time I said something. You know? Anyway. So then maybe that was my idea. But, like, it didn't help. And we continued to fall. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll start wearing a silly jacket every day. And then the numbers continue to fall. I wear my goofy vest and the numbers continue to fall. Okay, so I can't, I can't figure out anything to actually make the show better. So you know what I do? I say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the show aggressively worse, okay? I'm going to replace Mike with Ryan and Cumberland. He's going to be the new co-host, okay? So it's going to be me and Ryan, and I'm going to make sure that this show is is actively bad, and then in a month, I'm going to figure out some way to get Mike back. Now, once I get Mike back, because I've sunk the show for a month, everyone's going to go, oh, Observer Live, it's so much better now. Thank God Mike is back. That's what they're doing with The Miz. They have found a way to make the show worse. The Miz is the champion. And so what they're going to do is they're going to make you, the viewer, tune in next week thinking, oh, this Lashley. Man, he was awesome on Raw. Well, next week, Lashley's going to beat The Miz. But then there's going to be some sort of horrible finish. And then you're going you're gonna to be mad And you're going to tune in next week because you're going to think, well, inevitably, they got to beat The Miz at some point. So you're going to keep watching. And finally, Lashley is going to beat The Miz. And then you're going to go, oh, the show is so much better now. That's the psychology here. How do I know this? Well, they did this with Corbin. Remember they had that, that, that period where Corbin was just all over the show? It was horrible. And then finally, they built to the day where... Shane and Steph and everybody came on and they got rid of Corbin and they said we're going to turn it all around and of course all the dummies were like oh well they're going to turn it all around now oh the show is so much better now that Corbin is no longer all over the show so it didn't make the show better it was because they sunk the show with Corbin and then they got rid of Corbin and then like the show felt better because Corbin wasn't all over the show so anyway that's my thoughts on Raw I mean I was largely bored Drew McIntyre has dropped off the face of the earth even though he lost the title. Sheamus, who beat Drew last week, is just having matches and beating Jeff Hardy. They're building up Lashley for a match 
we're like I, I have no faith he's winning the title next week. It's going to be stringing us along week after week until they finally do something. And I truly fear that Miz might go into WrestleMania as the WWE champion so that we can have our happy ending when someone finally beats the Miz. That's my raw review. Do we get the singles match with Drew at WrestleMania so he can win the title in front of people, which he has not been able to do, I guess, the last two times he's now won the title? Or do you do a multi-person match at WrestleMania since we now have, in theory, four contenders for that title? Bobby well, Lashley, Sheamus, Drew, and, you know. I believe, I believe, I don't know why, I'm, I'm a fool. I am a damn fool. I believe that at WrestleMania, Drew is going to get his big championship coronation in front of fans. That's what I believe they're going to do. Now, what they do in that match, I mean, maybe it'll be Drew versus The Miz. I mean, if it's my company, which it's clearly not, Lashley obliterates The Miz next week. And then you could do like Lashley versus Sheamus at Fastlane, a, a mean guy clobbering slobber knocker. And the winner of that goes on to lose to Drew at WrestleMania. That's what I do, okay? But I'm trying to make the show, like, enjoyable. They're trying to make the show poor so that when they reverse this Miz thing, you're you're full of gratitude for WWE, and you celebrate what they have done, and you talk about how this Miz run was actually great, even though it's really not. That's what I would do. But they could do a four-way. Miz, Drew, Lashley, Sheamus, four dudes... And then, you know, you do whatever you got to do. They could do that. You ever throw a black Sambuca out of your nose? I don't know what, Rand Randy Orton, like, I didn't even care. Like, everyone thought I was going to be really mad about it, but, bro, the Miz is the champion. Who cares if Randy vomits? I mean, like, who cares? <laughs> they say that's the real magic is Miz is world champion. Do you guys remember the Papa Shango thing? Because I watched it, like, a few months ago because we were re-watching those superstars. Like, it was terrible. Yeah. And the feud with the Warrior was horrific. And there was, like, nothing good about it. But, like, some of you were kids. And so, I guess, maybe maybe you thought it was good? I don't know. It wasn't. Now Randy's vomiting black goo. Uh, whoop de doo <laughs> It's like the bet that Wahoo McDaniel had where you could drink the uh, quart of motor oil and then run 50 miles or whatever it was. It's a... Uh... But it kind of reminded me of right there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, believe it or not, I didn't think Raw was a hideous show at all. In fact, I thought in some ways if this show was, God bless it, two hours, it would have been a hell of a lot better Dude, show. Dude, we had clean finishes. We had yeah. decent wrestling. But I there was, was bored. Well, and there was not an overdose on content either. I mean, they just they drag things out for a lot longer than they needed to be. I mean, regardless of what you thought about, you know, Ric Flair and Charlotte, that whole thing got that pushed on for a long time. Same thing with the tornado match. I think in hindsight, although the match only went, you know, like six minutes, it was it was not a good six. They just did they did not have a great fit together. And Damian Priest, Angel Garza, as much as I like Garza, that match went too long. So there were some things I think that were dragged out a little bit, but they didn't overdo too much. The focus was Bobby Lashley. And I think you're dead wrong about Adam Pierce and, and uh, Shane oh, McMahon. I don't, know you how you, I don't know how you think you're getting there when I think it's going to be Shane and Braun and, and Braun throwing Shane off of something high, not just he and Adam wrestling in the middle of the ring. I think, I think you're going to be surprised, buddy. I mean, everything they've done, it's always been Pierce and Shane on screen together. And Shane makes some decision, and, and Pierce does his weird face, and he doesn't understand what the guy's saying. And it's like, they're never not on screen together. It just screams Braun, especially with Braun having nothing to do on a singles. You know, again, unless he's going to be tied into the, this situation with the world title. I don't know. It just to me, it screams that he and Shane will do something crazy. Hey, where's that guy in the chat yesterday that said that the highlight of Raw last night was going to be Miz, Miz's insanely great promo? I must have missed that promo. I was watching I was watching them tell me that Rhea Ripley is, is returning at some point or debuting. Anyway, hey, Tony Khan's coming on. That's what we got to talk about here. So, back in a moment, Observer Live. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, 
Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.